Welcome to the Armani Talks YouTube channel. I'm your host, Armani Talks. In this channel, I'm helping you level up your communication skills three times a week, every Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I drop a brand new video dealing with topics such as public speaking, how to boost your charisma in social interactions, how to unleash your inner prolific writer, and many more other topics which will help you become a wizard with words. Join me by hitting that subscribe button along with that bell notification right on below and let's talk about small talk skills. Be honest, in regards to small talk, do you currently view it in a positive light? Such as, are you someone who's like, yes, I get to create small talk today? Or are you the opposite? Do you view this field in a negative light? You think, I gotta create small talk again. I don't know about for you, but for me, for a large period in my life, I was in the latter category. For me, I didn't like small talk at all. And one of the reasons I didn't like it was because I didn't have any formulas or frameworks in regards to this field, which basically caused me to throw a bunch of random stuff and a conversation, hoping, desperately hoping that it stuck, which it rarely would, making the situation awkward for me and all parties involved. That luckily changed when I met a gentleman named Matt. Matt and I met in this networking event. He was suited up, wearing this custom suit, late 30s, he was high energy, high in terms of social intelligence. And once we were interacting, everything was going smooth. Once the conversation starts wrapping up, Matt gives me his business card and says, Armani, I would like to meet up with you next Wednesday. Come through to my office. I look at this business card. I see his office address. He's very far away from where I live. I don't know if I want to drive that far, but since the meeting with him went so smooth right now, I thought, you know what? A part two will be wise. Matt, I'll see you next Wednesday. Next Wednesday, I end up going to his office and he starts hosting the second meeting. He was the host. You would expect him to have a whole bunch of conversation material. You would expect that he would put the guest at ease. You would expect that this meeting goes smoothly because he's the one who suggested it. Isn't that what you would expect? That's what I would expect. What, are you saying that wasn't the case, Armani? Are you saying that Matt was not a good host? Matt was not a good host. He was a great host. That meeting was excellent. I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but it went by very smoothly. One and a half hours just flew on by. Matt started the interaction talking about his background. He started talking about his upbringing, how he entered the field of sales, how he went into debt, how he climbed out of debt. But he wasn't just rambling about himself the entire time. Strategically, he would grab me and place me in the conversation repetitively until I started to build rapport with him. The stronger that the rapport got, the stronger that the connection became, and the stronger that the connection became, the more that the time flew on by. Once the meeting was done, Matt asks me, Armani, do you have any questions for me? I didn't have any questions for him, but I did have an observation. Matt, your past sales background must be paying dividends for you right now because you are an exceptionally great communicator. He was happy that I made this observation, but you could tell that he was expecting this observation. Then he asks, the beginning of our interaction went very smoothly, didn't it? Did you like my small talk skills? Yeah, I did. Do you wonder how a guy like me, 
A guy who used to be very introverted, was sheltered growing up, was shy growing up, learned how to build small talk skills. What's this guy getting at? Does he have a formula or a framework for small talk? I asked him and he nods his head. He responds back with frog, family, relationships, occupation, and goals. Armani, did you notice in the beginning of our interaction, I was asking you about your family? Yeah, I did uh, remember that. What about your relationships? Do you recall how I was asking about your relationships? Yeah. What about your occupation, what you did for a living? I recall you asking about that as well. And what about your goals? Do you recall in the beginning of our interaction where I was asking about your present day goals as well as your future goals? I do remember that. Frog, were you doing this throughout our meeting? He proudly starts nodding his head. I was shocked because Normally, when you envision formulas, you think that this person was going to be a little robotic because it's a rigid formula. Not at all. Due to this framework of Frog, he was able to seamlessly carry this entire conversation on his back. It was easy. Then Matt says, Armani, feel free to steal Frog. I want you to leverage it in your respective career because Frog has created a whole bunch of social opportunities for me, leverage it as well. And that's what I did. For the next couple of weeks, I too started to leverage Frog in these different networking events. I enjoyed Frog. I liked Frog. But I did not love Frog. Why not? It worked so well for Matt. You're saying you could find something better? It's not necessarily that I didn't like it like it. It just felt like something was missing. For my frameworks, I like the nitty gritty fundamentals. With Frog, even though it's a great framework for people to get started, here's an analogy for you to understand. I felt as though it's as though you're on a basketball court and when you're practicing, it's as though you're practicing in five locations and you're mastering the jump shot in those five locations. So by the time that the game starts, you can just execute your jump shot on those five locations. That's great. That's better than not making any shots at all. But what I wanted was the art of learning how to jump shoot from anywhere. By understanding the fundamentals of jump shooting, then true basketball can be unleashed. And by understanding the fundamentals of small talk, true conversation can be unleashed. So Armani, since your experience with Frog, what else were you able to discover? I was able to discover my personal framework, which is walls and bridges. Let's talk about that for a second. When I bring up a wall in context to a social interaction, what do you think? I think Barrier. It's like a barrier is being created. Okay, that's for wall. What about for bridge? What do you think for that? For bridge, I envision a connection happening. Excellent. So let's imagine I'm using my palm to signal something. Imagine I use the palm as you are walking towards me at a rapid rate and I do this. What does this represent to you? Does it represent Wall or bridge? Well, it looks like you're creating a barrier. So this is a wall. Fair. Now imagine I get the same palm and I do this as you're walking close to me. What do you envision now? Well, this time it looks like you're trying to build a connection with me. So this one looks like a bridge. This and this is the fundamentals of small talk. Anytime that we are creating a small talk of some sort, or we find ourselves engaged in one, it comes down to, are we bringing down the walls 
or are we creating a bridge? Because let's understand this on a deeper level. Every person, stranger, that we are speaking to has this invisible wall up. It's nothing personal. It's just that there's survival aspects ingrained in people. Because if this stranger is just trusting you from the very beginning, who knows? What if you're a serial killer or you're trying to steal this man's wallet? This guy doesn't know if he should trust you. So there's this invisible wall which is created. The fundamental nature of small talk is consistently just bringing the wall down, down, down. And how do you bring it down? You bring it down through simplicity and through happiness. By simplicity, less is more. A simple hello beats, hello, how are you doing? I am from this particular company. Which company are you from? Hey, uh, we should grab lunch this, this, this particular day. Too much. This is complex. A simple hello helps bring the wall down. Another part of the wall is happiness. You could say a lot of things wrong, but if you're smiling, if you're exuding joy, then you bypass this individual's conscious mind and you start engaging their subconscious mind, the feeling mind. When someone smiles, that particular person creates mirror neurons in the other person, making them feel good. So this activity is bringing the wall down. That's one of the fundamental parts of small talk. But just bringing the wall down does not allow the conversation to move forward. We also must work on statements which create the bridge. How can we create a bridge? Plenty of ways, but let's cut to the nitty gritty understanding. It's to aim to build a familiarity with them. It's to search for something where you can relate with the other person. By having that as the intention, I'm looking for something that can create a similarity between us two. It prevents just asking fluffy questions like, oh, how's the weather today? How's the weather today does nothing to build the familiarity unless you see that you're drenched in rain because you were walking from the parking lot to the office and you got drenched and you see that this same person is drenched as well. And both of you guys are in the elevator. This is a famili familiarity which is being built. These are what we call bridge statements. By understanding the whole concept of bringing the wall down and creating bridges, we can just keep creating small talk from there. Armani, does your wall and bridges format conflict with frog? Not at all. Because the more that you understand walls and bridges, the more that frog makes sense. Because let's just choose one of the letters from frog. Family. Why is it that Matt was asking about my family? Is that a way to bring my walls down or to create the bridge? Both. Because him showing an interest regarding family helps me bring my walls down because he's showing an interest in me. And by understanding me on a much deeper level, there's an invisible bridge that he's creating among both of us. The only addition that walls and bridges are capable of doing is that it doesn't matter what sort of subject matter it is. We're just learning how to shoot the jump shots. That's all small talk comes down to. Bring down walls, create bridges. Bring down walls, create bridges. Keep doing this process in iteration. More and more that the walls come down and the bridges become built, the more an acquaintance turns into a friend or more, a stranger turns into an acquaintance. With this simple understanding, you are now in the basketball court of social interactions. But this time, you don't have to plan these four particular topics that you can only say. You don't have to envision yourself just shooting from four parts of the court. But this time, you have the jump shot mastered. This time, you have the fundamentals of small talk mastered. All small talk either comes down to bringing the wall down, engaging the bridge, or a little bit of both. Leverage that and the mysterious world of small talk 
starts to become more clarified before your very eyes. Thank you for joining the Armani Talks YouTube channel, and I'll catch you on the next episode.